David. We're booked into suite 504. I'll be at the hotel at nine. Don't be late. Stay close to me, sir. I have a meeting to attend. I'll join you later. David, we're late already. Harriet, it's a trade show, isn't it? Well, what do you want me to tell them? <laughs> tell them to make sure there's some drink left. Ambassador, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the Ulster Farming Manufacturers. Thank you. I thought Mr. McNaughton would be coming. Oh, yes, yes, he is. He's most anxious to be here, but he had some urgent business to attend to. Oh, good. It's not often we get the support of a minister from the Northern Ireland office. I'm sure McNaughton stays off the source. We know what he's like. Well, I hope he's coming. This meeting is not in his program. That'd be something worth offending these people for. So, tell me, Ambassador, what about these talks? We expect to sign an agreement in two days, so I'd say very positive. Who for? For anyone who wants peace, Mr. Hughes. Is the government going to sell out Ulster, is that it? Spoken like a true loyalist, Mr. Hughes. Let me tell you something. If this thing goes the way we think it will, Belfast will really go up this time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mr. Stone? Yeah. Forgive me for interrupting, but there's a phone call for you. Ah, sorry. Who is it? You wouldn't give his name. Hello? This is David McNaughton. I'm in suite 504, and I need you to meet me here immediately. Can I ask you what this is in connection with, sir? No, I, I can't talk now. I'll tell you when you get here. Oh, and it might be best if you're not seen. What's the problem? It was some kind of freak accident. I didn't do anything. He just suddenly collapse. I... Look, this has nothing to do with me. We better inform the ambassador. No, no. If this gets out, no. The effect it would have on the Irish talk. To... Look, I I've spoken to the cabinet office. Now, you are the MI6 officer stationed here, aren't you? Look, you have to help me with this. I am meeting my protection officer in about five minutes. Now, I need to know what you're going to do about this. You better tell me what happened. I'm not a doctor, some kind of heart attack. Why didn't you call a doctor? Because he was dead. But look, it happened so quick, I, 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 I tried to revive him, I tried everything, but he was gone. Look, if I had called an ambulance, if this were made public, well, you can imagine, people misinterpret deliberately 
they would use this to demolish the peace process. Everything we're about to achieve. Look, I, I have not committed a crime here. Nothing illegal happened. We're both consenting adults. We were fooling around and... Uh, this is a terrible tragedy, but that's all. Now, I have explained all of this to the Cabinet Office, and they agree we need a cover-up. That may not be viable. What do you mean? Had you finished having sex with him? Well, yes. Did you leave anything on the body? It was safe sex, if that's what you mean. Whose name's the room booked in? His. Anybody see you together? No, I don't think so. No, no, Anybody no. see you coming in here? No, what I was doing up here with him, I don't know. It was stupid. Where did you meet this man? Through an agency. It sounds callous, I know. Is there any way you can be linked? No, it, it was all completely anonymous. I used a false name. But my fingerprints are probably all over the place. I, I can sort that out. Remove all traces of the second person here. Will you? No one must ever be aware of my actions. On no account is anyone at the embassy to be informed. This has nothing to do with the ambassador. If she was here, she could not allow this to happen. I am aware of that. You better leave me to organize this. Use a service lift. Go now. Large scotch, no ice. Certainly, sir. Minister, how was your meeting? Uh, fine. Good. Well, I can introduce you to some people now. Uh, no, I have to prepare for tomorrow. Are you all right? Yes, yes. Um, just that tomorrow's a big day. If you'd excuse me. I never did quite get to meet you and Mr. McNaughton, after all. No, I know. I, I... I promise I'll try and do something about it. And thank you for a lovely evening. Thank you very much, Dina. Thank you. Off already, Ambassador. John, what's going on? Nothing. Look, you disappeared completely. Tell me what's going on. Some unofficial diplomacy, that's all. Is this something I should know about? Absolutely not. Good night. What are they trying to do? They'll make him a target. Oh, I don't know what they expect. I mean, he's staying with a friend, for God's sake. The family go to mass. He can't exactly refuse. No, of course he can't, but they shouldn't take a photo. Well, you just have to bring him home. He's going to be gutted. Yes, I know. Apologise to Robert's parents. Just tell them that that photo jeopardises his security. What do I say to Sam? Oh, t tell him I'm sorry. I Make it sound better, Bex, OK? Thanks. You know this agreement has taken us nearly nine months. Well, let's hope it's a natural delivery then. New agreements are fine, so long as people don't use the old ways of judging them. We've consulted with the unionists, they're satisfied. Well, David, I have to say that meeting with them last night, the interesting thing about the unionists is their lack of trust. The British government will not sell them out. Ah, 
Hello. Great, you have a ticket. I'll take a seat over there and we'll be with you in just a moment. <laughs> I'll um, obviously have to speak to my superior about this. Are you ready to do battle, Mr. McNaughton? I'm winner now, Mr. Flaherty. Oh. <laughs> and I trust you're well of us. You're very chirpy today, Kevin. Is this a good omen? Only the worried need to resort to omens, Ambassador. We've only one small issue. I'm sure we can resolve it before the signing ceremony. Good. Well, I've got the champagne on ice. Mm. I gather you were both guests at the Ulster Farm Manufacturers last night. Yes. Mm. Did you hear about this bizarre incident at the hotel? Well, after you had all finished partying, one of their fellows, an Ulsterman, was found lying dead in his room, naked. Well, that sounds more tragic than bizarre. Well, not when you take into account that of the 117 people who stayed in that room within the last year, only the dead man left his fingerprints. The guard, he find it very bizarre. Apparently, a body was found. She says she saw Minister McNaughton entering the same room with the murder victim. She wants us to give her a work visa to keep quiet. Love it. She's been repeatedly making applications. None as desperate as this. I think we should say something to her. Thank you so much, Miss Lau, for enlivening our morning with your wonderful story. But your application has been refused. Didn't that man explain? Miss Lau, should you choose to waste your undoubted talent for fantasy on us again, I should warn you that there are certain rules governing these procedures. One is that the British government is not influenced by favour, payment or menaces. That includes attempts at blackmail. Do I make myself clear? Good morning. Without concessions on the Ballycarry march, the Irish government will not endorse this agreement. And that's the long and short of it, Mr. McNaughton. The focus of these talks is joint security, not marches. And what about the security of the nationalist community? They feel decidedly insecure with these orange men's triumphalist displays outside their front doors. Banning the marches is not the solution. It makes matters worse. It takes approximately five minutes... For Three days. Five minutes for those apprentice boys to cross the bridge and walk Last that year section it took three of the road. Days. Which is precisely my point if you'd let me finish. We had a standoff for three it days. It should be banned. Why did they need to celebrate some 300-year-old battle? You're being unreasonable. Do you think so? Well, how would you like it if we came marching through your towns, waving the Irish tribe? Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, th this isn't getting us anywhere. Forgive me, but I'm just trying to make you understand what it's like. I know, Kevin. And the British government is sensitive to nationalist concerns. But this is a democratic society we're discussing. And you can't ban something that a large percentage of the Ulster population agrees with. These parades are a microcosm of the problems in the North. If people aren't prepared to give up five minutes, five minutes, of deliberately waving their flags in the Catholic community's face, what are they prepared to concede? We've already conceded the Irish government's involvement. Some might say interference in Ulster's internal affairs. Let us not forget that. And what did you say to this uh, would-be witness? <laughs> I felt sorry for her. You fancy her? I didn't want to be rude to her. And what did you tell her? Learn. We saw how I dealt with her. I make quite sure we won't be seeing her again. Did you mention this to anyone else? No. Well, a story like this, even an unsubstantiated one, could jeopardise the talks. You mentioned this to no one, not even the ambassador. Do you understand? Understand? Yeah. Give me this woman's visa application. I want her address. Flaherty is pushing too hard. Oh, don't be so defensive. If he pushes, we roll. We will not make concessions on Bally Kerry. Now, let's not get entrenched, David. Don't tell me what to do. Look, we're on the same side. All I am suggesting is that we don't fight him. We will not make concessions, and that's final. The Unionists already feel sold out. They would consider this as an act of treason. There would be bloodshed. Absolutely not. Why are you pushing me away, David? I'm only trying to help. Has something happened? Has this got anything to do with your meeting last night? I am merely stating British government policy.
Miss Lamb? Yes. Hello. I gather you came to the British consulate looking for a work visa. Is there somewhere we could talk? been some misunderstanding. I gather you think you saw a British minister? I did see him go into that room last night with the other man. The man that was murdered. This man. He was there. Yes. Have you mentioned this to anyone else? Not yet. And what about the Guardi? Have they interviewed you? No. I tell you first. Then maybe I can become a British citizen. But you asked for a work visa? Now, British citizen. Uh, now, hold on. For me and for her. No, 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 that's impossible. Okay. Now you get out. And for Slav. You don't trip me like this, get out! Okay, okay, I'm going. But if you just come back to the consulate, ask for this gentleman, I'm sure we can sort it out. Any telegrams from me? No. Nothing from the cabinet office? I've been sent to find you. What did she say what it was about? No, but she didn't ask for tea and biscuits. Right. Close the door, will you, John? Is that the matter that required your unofficial diplomacy? He was found dead at the hotel we were at last night. About the time we were there. I'm aware of his death. Very unfortunate. You haven't answered my question, John. I think I have. There's nothing that concerns you. I'm the ambassador here. This is a British subject who's found dead in suspicious circumstances. I want to know what happened. I can tell you that no crime has been committed, if that's helpful. No crime. He was a known rent boy. He was 16, underage. That's a crime, isn't it? Where did you get that information? The consular department are helping the guardee with their inquiries. Apparently, they're working on the theory that he was imported to Dublin by a wealthy client. Someone who was at the reception last night. Harriet. Don't get drawn into this. The only thing that involves the embassy is uh, an application for a work visa. A work visa? For whom? Well, that's your department, isn't it, Julian? You tell me. Well, uh, <clears throat> I uh, don't really... Don't really... bluster, Julian. Just tell me. All I know... He knows nothing. Well, he must know who the applicant is. I don't want any lies, Julian. Who is the visa for? Um... It's, uh, Miss Lau. I see. And what kind of work does she do? She's a maid. At the hotel where the man was found dead? Ambassador. All right. All right, Julian, you can go. John? Is McNaughton involved in this boy's death? I have to know. And what would you be obliged to do if you did? Inform the guardie. Precisely. You'd have to. Harriet. It would put you in an impossible position. I'm asking you to trust me. Now, you make it clear. We do not accept our claims are true, but they can be very damaging, and that is the only reason for our response. Do you understand, Julian?
I apologise if our manner appeared slightly abrupt this morning. I've had a chance to relook at your application for a work visa. British citizen. I could go to the papers. I think they pay me plenty of money for this story. Miss Lau, we don't believe your story. We believe you saw someone who looked very much like the minister. Then I'll go now. Miss Lau, please sit down. Let's leave these allegations aside. Why don't you explain to me your reasons for wanting to live in the United Kingdom? I don't want my daughter to grow up back home. There's no work. I have to work as a dancer. Do you know what that means? Yes, I can imagine. I don't want that for her. On compassionate grounds, I'm prepared to grant you a work visa for the UK. British citizen. The, the visa will be renewable. And then we can look formally at your application for citizenship. That is providing that you don't repeat these allegations. Do you understand? Good. Now, I need a day to sort things out. Can you please come back tomorrow and I'll be in a position to grant you a visa. This arrived from the consular department. Oh, right. Oh. I'm sure it's... It's just a sick prank. Yeah. Make sure the protection office sees it, will you? You're right. Mm. Where is he? He's down there. Sam! Hey! It's not fair. I know it isn't. They shouldn't be allowed to put pictures of me in the paper without my permission. Me! Yes! Pure logic. Listen. When you're important, I don't know why, people want to know everything about you. But I'm not important. Anyway, why does it matter which church I go to? It doesn't. It's the same God, isn't it? Yes. Look, I'm sorry I had to bring you back from Roberts. It's just that I don't like the idea of people following you around with cameras. Will you forgive me? Yes, you will, both of <laughs> I missed you! Food's on the table, Sam. And you're going to have to start getting ready soon, Harriet. Yes, miss. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> How was your meeting with the ambassador? Difficult. Why? Oh, I'm trying to keep her out of something she doesn't understand. I can't tell you anymore. Mm. Oh, um, from the Cabinet Secretary. Good. What? I'll, uh, see you later. <laughs> Give me a chance. Ambassador, it's about this young boy who died in the hotel. They've mentioned that Mr. McNaughton was at the hotel that night. Yes, well, we know that. Thank you, Becky. It is mentioned three times. I'm concerned that Mr. McNaughton's name has been deliberately linked to the death. Is there some kind of problem that I should be aware of? Not what I've been told. They state that the Guardian found that the evidence at the scene had been expertly removed. What does that imply to you? The paper's just making mischief. The inference is some kind of cover-up. Now, before you start making accusations, where are the facts? But you do know about this, Ambassador. I know as much as you do. So? We turn a blind eye? I think you know me better than that. There was a witness. I've had to take care of her. I hope the talks went better this afternoon. Uh, possibly. Mr. Flaherty seems to be changing his tune. He knows we won't budge on Bally Carey. I'm pushing for its inclusion into the next round of talks. Try and put marching properly on the agenda next time, yes? Oh, we shall see. Mm. I think we've all earned a drink today. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Tell me, have the Embassy heard anything more about that poor boy found in the hotel? I didn't think there was anything else to hear. It sounded like a tragic accident. Are you aware of the story, Mr McNaughton? Um, vaguely. Apparently, he was a rent boy. 
He got himself into some kind of, I don't know, medical difficulties. It seems his client just left him there to die and then ran off. Well, maybe the client left and then the boy died. Except, according to the autopsy, they found a light bruising over his heart. So whoever was with him tried to revive him. Instead of calling an ambulance, he tried some sort of amateur-type cardiac massage. Needless to say, the Guardi are looking for this man to help them with their inquiries. Mm. But I thought the boy had died of natural causes, so no crime's been committed. No, heart failure was induced by the amphetamines he'd been taking. Oh. The Guardi want to find out who supplied the boy with the drugs. They're treating it as a murder inquiry. Um, would you excuse me? The death occurred, I think it was on the fifth floor. Apparently, Mr. McNaughton was seen going up to that floor around that time. Really? Mm. Is there anything I should know? Not that I've been informed of, no. Mr. Flaherty, I don't know if you know Mr. Hughes. Oh, Mr. Hughes, of course. Hello. I have that. Uh... Am I the only person who doesn't know what went on in that hotel? You have to trust me, Harriet. Look, I've been playing semantics with Flaherty. Whatever you've done, you've put the embassy at risk. I'm trying to protect you. But this can't go on, John. What's happening? Is, is it this maid? Is she still the problem? What I'm processing the visa. Everything's under control. Well, how does Flaherty know so much? What does he know? He, he knows that McNaughton's involved. He hasn't said that. He just told you and me that he was on the fifth floor, the same floor as the boy. That proves nothing. Well, who told the guardie? It wasn't the maid. There's another witness? I can't tell you. How many witnesses are there, for God's sake? I want to know, and I want to know now. You cannot become involved in this, Harriet. Let me be the judge of that. Who were the other witnesses? One is a guardie protection officer. The other is a security camera. So there's a tape? Yeah. Show me. I got this from hotel security. It's the only copy. They don't know what's on it. The boy goes into the lift with McNaughton, but they only press one button. They're obviously going to the same floor. He gets there too late to see the two of them together. Who is that? His Irish protection officer, McNaughton, gave him the slip. Now, he's watching the floor indicator. Oh, that's how the guardie and Flaherty knew that McNaughton went to the fifth floor. Yeah. Now watch. Now, believe it or not, I've shown you this to reassure you. They have no evidence linking the minister to the dead man's room. It's pure speculation, and that's all it is. He was holding hands with the boy. No one's aware of this tape, Harriet. Besides, it's still circumstantial. It doesn't prove that he was ever in that room. We know, John. You and I know that McNaughton was involved in this boy's death. You are talking about a junior minister who's just about to close some crucial talks, Ambassador. I'd be very careful about jumping to conclusions. Oh, now, don't you warn me off, John. I'm well aware of the situation. I, I suppose this maid was some kind of a witness. She's no longer of significance. How the hell did you get involved in this in the first place? McNaughton told me the cabinet office had authorised a cover-up. He lied. My mistake. I can assure you, Mr. Hughes, we have the unionist interest at heart. Mr. McNaughton, sorry. Uh, the ambassador would like to see him. So, you excuse me. How have the Irish got hold of this? Keep your bloody voice down. Why? It's out. The way Flaherty's speaking, I'm facing a murder charge. You screwed up. You lied to me. You organised a cover-up which failed. I contacted the cabinet office. They know nothing about this situation. They never sanctioned my actions. And if I'd known the truth, there would never have been a cover-up. I'd have handed you to the police myself. With pleasure. Minister. I now have evidence that links you to the dead boy in the hotel. I will deny this. And if these allegations are made public, you will damage these talks with grave implications for yourself and for the embassy. Don't try and threaten me. If the evidence I have is given to the guardie, you will be liable for criminal prosecution. I have not committed a crime. David, your sex life is your own business. 
but you let that boy die. You imported a child for your own gratification and you let him die. You watched him die. And then you convinced a member of my staff to impede a murder inquiry. This is not true. This you is to supposition. You him that because of the talks, there should be a cover-up. No. It wasn't because of the talks, was it? It was because of your political career. You knew that boy was only 16, didn't you? And you knew he was on drugs. That's why he died. Did you supply him with those drugs? Certainly not. I would never touch drugs. I... Oh, you're so high on power, you don't need them, do you? All right. He was a rent boy. He lived on the streets. I was trying to help him. I was trying to steer him away from drugs. I paid his fur down here and gave him the money for the room. But... I didn't know this was going to happen. Christ, what have I done to deserve this? The boy just died in my arms. There was nothing I could do. You're breaking my heart. Well, now we all know what happened. What are we going to do about it? Right. Until these talks are successfully concluded, I'll keep my mouth shut. After that, I'll present my evidence to the guardie. You would be risking Mr. Stone's career, not to mention your own. It's obvious that you were fully informed of the facts. You know that's not the case. And chose to suppress them from the Irish government. If you think threats like that are going to make a difference, you don't know me very well, Minister. Now, you have two alternatives. One, I expose you as a liar and a paedophile. Or two, you resign. Take your choice. Now, you will make sure that these talks are successfully concluded, and when you go back to London, you will resign your post as minister. Thank you, minister. He mustn't be allowed to get away with this. If this comes out, if the maid talks, McNaughton's going to make damn sure he takes you with him. Find Wadham, get him to issue a visa immediately, and you take it to her now. Right. Do you know where she is? She's still here, she hasn't moved. and security video, you bastard. They suspect you. Leave me alone, will you? There's an Asian maid who works here. Where can I find her? Who the bloody hell do you think you are? I've done you a favour already. Yeah, and you were well paid for it too. You wouldn't want your employers to know about that now, would you? I should take your brains out. I'm just asking for some simple information. Don't excite yourself. I've seen her walk the pavement up the canal. The guardie are looking for her too. Thanks. gone missing. Oh. Stone's looking for her. Look, it doesn't matter what time of night it is, I need to be kept informed, all right? Business, darling.
life, sit and watch television 24 hours a day. Oh, just leave me. When are you going to get on with some work? Oh, look, I don't know what's wrong, but don't start having a go I'm sorry, me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Nate, I'm sorry. Why are you in such a shitty mood? I can't tell you. There's no reason, is there? You're just in a bloody mood. God, if only you knew. Tell me. You see, I'll try and talk to you. Do you know, Nate, I'd really love to tell you. I don't have that many people I can turn to. Well... Go on, then. I can't. It's something to do with work. Yep. Mum. Who do you think I'm going to go and tell? Just tell me what's happened. All right. Um, I've done something. I've had to sanction something that I believe is wrong. You make it sound like a crime. Mum, are you in trouble? Yes. Do we know if the police arrested her as part of a vice operation or whether they wanted to question her about something else? She's been charged with soliciting. As far as I can see, they're probably not aware of who she is. But what the hell was she doing streetwalking? Didn't, didn't you make it clear? Ambassador, I explained to her that we were going to look after her. Well, you obviously didn't do a good enough job. There's nothing to stop her now telling her story to get out. I don't believe she will. Oh, come on, Julia. You did make it clear she'd be jeopardising everything. Well, you have to talk to her again. Just make absolutely certain that she understands that we're going to look after her. But she's in custody. I, I can't go down there. I want her out of this country by tomorrow. I can't do that. The police won't allow it. I have no jurisdiction. She's not a British subject. Well, now, I'm sure that her employers are most anxious that she should start work as soon as possible, aren't they? Uh... Yes. But if they realise what I'm doing, the embassy will be exposed. We're exposed already, Julian. Brandon, keep the tea warm. Will do, sir. Won't be long. You embassy people pop up like weeds. When do you think Miss Lau will be released? She says she's pleading not guilty, so it'll have to go to trial. Which cell is that way? She's a popular girl. Yeah, well, she might be able to help us with a murder inquiry, you know? Uh, hang on a minute. Surely I... Well, I may be wrong, but... Are you allowed to bring a person into custody on one matter and then interview them in connection with a separate incident? Are you her lawyer? I'm from the British Consulate. Oh. So, um, why are you here then? We're looking after Miss Lau's affairs. Why is that? She has a work visa to, uh, to come to Britain. And her employer, who's not without influence, has been hassling the embassy. He's, he's keen for her to start work as soon as possible. Can't get a prostitute over there then, though? <laughs> no, no it's, it's in the travel business. So she'll be giving free rides for air miles, will she? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, we're not wanting to form the interview, Miss Lau, but she might have been a witness or something. So, uh, these questions she can respond to voluntarily. Fine. Right, well, if you can give me a few moments with her in private, I'll, I'll explain that to her, shall I? Five minutes. You're going to be asked a few questions, I'm afraid. Well, there's nothing to worry about. You must continue to say nothing. Is that clear? Provided you do that, what I'll do is organise a good lawyer for you. Now, you'll go to court first thing in the morning. And I'm quite sure that you'll get off with a small fine, which, which of course, we'll, we'll pay. 
I am not a prostitute. The man who brought me here to Dublin, he said he was going to marry me. But when I arrive, he makes me pay rent to live in his house. The money at the hotel, it doesn't pay enough. So, he makes yes, me... Yes, he makes you work for him. Okay. But, if you just plead guilty, no one will know. I will know. All I'm trying to do is get you out of here as soon as possible. You don't want to be sent home. What job will I have in London? Um, it's at a travel agency. What will I do there? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but, but it's a good job. Um, and and I'll, I'll organise a place for you to live in London. You get, uh, you get cheap travel. Uh, you can visit your family for, for holidays. All you've got to do is speak to the police, but say nothing and go through with tomorrow. Plead guilty. Can you do that for me? Please? Let me speak with the Prime Minister. McNaughton. I'll wait. John, I have to get back to the talks. What's happened? She's on her way to the north, then onto her flight to London. The Guardi interviewed her. She kept her promise. All right. It's not something I feel proud of. Neither do I, John. Neither do I. So, congratulations, Mr. McNaughton. I knew we'd get there in the end. Have we got an agreement? Banning the march was the only solution. What? I'm glad the Prime Minister was finally made to see some sense. Well, it's nothing to do with me. Oh? Then what did bring about this change? I don't know. The PM must have had a change of heart. Excuse me, I need to talk to Mr. McNaughton. We've had instructions from the EFA. London's given in to all concessions demanded by the Irish. What the hell's going on? David? David! I know what you're going to say, Harriet. Yes. Why did the government make this sudden U-turn? Negotiations. There is no point in discussions if one is not prepared to change one's point of view. I spoke with the Cabinet Office about the Ballycarry March, and uh, they reached a new decision. And why exactly did the Prime Minister change his mind? Did you tell him about these allegations? I mentioned them, yes. And what about your resignation? Unnecessary. It's a bizarre tale that doesn't add up to much. I explained there was no evidence and, uh, no witnesses. Have you done a deal? You've saved your own skin, haven't you, in exchange for these concessions? There was no need. And I doubt the Irish government would be enthusiastic to pursue this matter. It certainly wouldn't be in Britain's interest if these endless talks were not concluded today. You will never sell this deal to the Unionists, and you know that, even if the PM doesn't. Don't you care that you've sold them out? There will be bloodshed, David. That's what you told me. The British government cannot be held hostage to threats of violence. Rubbish. Rubbish! You have misled the Prime Minister. You've put your own interests above those of the country. Let's be honest, Harry. You and I both know at the end of the day that no matter what happens, there'll always be problems in the North. Harriet, thank you for looking after me. Do you think you'll get away with it? Oh, I think I already have. I'll see you soon, and who knows, maybe next time as, uh, 
Secretary of State. Oh, David. Could you pop in here a moment? What have we got today? Farm Manufacturers Trade Fair and the EU cross-border grants. Oh. And this. Apparently, Mr. Norton wants to spend some more time with his family. Is there anything that I should be aware of? No, Stephen. <laughs> 